Sometimes the circle gets completed. Generations ago in Zanesville, Ohio, skilled hands shaped a reputation for well-made pottery. Today, new artisans are reviving the industry. For many years, the Zanesville, Ohio area was the pottery capital of the world. The people who started this tradition were farmers. These guys who farmed during the spring and summer months uh, would throw pots in backyard sheds during the fall and winter months. They say that uh, by 1850 there were as many as 41 of these farmer potters working in the area. It became to be known as bluebird potteries. In the spring, when the farmers left their sheds and went back to the fields, uh, it was about the same time that the bluebirds were making their northward migration out of the south, so hence the, the term bluebird pottery. Initially, they were making um, crocks and containers to store uh, food products for distribution up and down the canal. The uh, presence of natural resources of clay and sand um, with the skill sets that a lot of the earliest settlers brought into this area is really what uh, nucleated the industry um, 150 years ago. The first hundred years brought growth and prosperity. The last 50 have been bleak. Across America, the pottery industry has all but disappeared. But in Zanesville is one notable exception. They're still firing up the kilns at a place called Hearthstone. These folks um, are as good as they get. Um, we are a very traditional pottery, um, so it is very labor intensive. Our employees are skilled craftspeople. They've been in this industry for um, 20, 25 years, many of them. Some of them um, are second and third generation potters. Their, their families, their, their parents, their grandparents worked in a number of different potteries. I've been here for 26 years, and what I'm doing is called slip casting. It's one of the oldest forms of pottery making there is. We use a plaster mold into which we pour a clay slurry. The plaster is hydroscopic, so it's immediately going to begin absorbing water out of that clay. As, as that happens, a, a wall of clay develops on the surface of the plaster mold. After 50 to 60 minutes, the proper thickness is achieved. The excess slurry is emptied into a tub and recycled. It's not an automatic process. Bill has to consider the temperature and humidity level in the building to judge when it's time to crack open the mold. I take a pipe cleaner and brush the handle. Help prevent cracking and strengthens the handle. And we set it up there to dry. It has to dry 24 hours before you can finish it. I'm a finisher. I take the rough edges off of the wear and smooth them out. And then it passes on to the decorators. Each piece is touched by so many hands. Each craftsperson brings it closer to perfection. And when it's completed, the pride, like the work, is shared. It makes you real proud that when you see people, you know, in the store and they're all excited about getting a piece of wear. Yeah, it makes you real proud. Some places used machines to apply the decoration. Not here. It's the hand decoration that really sets us apart from the rest of the industry. The decorators use a number of different techniques to apply the decoration. Heartstone is special because we're the only hand-painted pottery around. I love what I do and I've been here 15 years and it's, it's just a part of what I do now. Once the decoration is complete, um, it'll go into the kiln to be bisque fired, after which we glaze the item. Um, the bisque fire permanently fuses the decoration to the clay piece and prepares the, the piece to absorb glaze. Glazers dip the, the piece in the glaze. As they bring it out of the glaze tub, uh, you can very quickly see that the water um, is, is absorbed into the clayware piece. The decoration has disappeared. We've got about 20 thousandths of an inch layer of glaze on that surface. 
the, uh, the firing process is probably the most critical process um, in the production of our product. There we transform a clayware piece or a crystalline piece literally into a piece of glass. You'll see 10 to 12, maybe as much as 14% shrinkage um, following the fire, and that's a result of the materials that make up each piece actually firing and melting together to form a fully vitrified piece of stoneware. It takes approximately 12 hours from start to finish to complete that cycle, firing up to a peak temperature of 2100 degrees. The kilns are firing today, but two years ago, Hearthstone was dead as a doornail. The company had been purchased by a large corporation, and things began to deteriorate. The, the sales slowly declined, and we actually went out of business uh, in November of 2004. And it was difficult. It was difficult to, to shut the facility down. It was difficult to see the industry um, go downhill the way it has. I was really upset when they shut down because I've been here, you know, about the only job I've ever had. It was heartbreaking when it, when it shut down. I didn't think it would ever reopen. I've worked in the ceramics industry for 20 years, and during that time, um, I've literally seen dozens and dozens of plants closed. This is a very traditional plant. Um, this area has a strong, a vibrant history uh, in the ceramics industry, and, and somebody's got to stand up and do something about it. We're not going to let this thing go. Um, it's what I've done for 20 years. It's what a lot of the people in this area have done for more than 20 years, and it's, it's a tradition that's worth preserving. After a relentless search, Wes found investors. The deal was done, and in July 2005, the doors reopened. A traditional form of American craftsmanship stayed alive in Zanesville, Ohio. In a world of automation, subcontractors, and outside suppliers, Hearthstone is a throwback to a different age. Our colors are formulated here, our glazes are formulated here. Every step of the process um, is homegrown. The process is really a long process, there's a lot of steps. A lot of hands touch the product. I love working with my hands. Um, it's different every day, and I just love my job. It's like a family here. It's part of our life. We have a lot of challenges ahead of us. Um, yes, there's the euphoria that came along with reopening the facility, bringing people back to work. The industry has always um, struggled to compete against foreign imports. Today's no different. People with skills and a passion for their work, people with dreams. Is that enough? The reality is unforgiving. In the end, it all comes down to sales. In addition to their Zanesville store and their internet site, Hearthstone is busy looking for new opportunities. We've produced for um, Starbucks and Dillard's and Crate and Barrel, and they've all come to us in the past because they did like what we produced. It was unique and we hope to be able to uh, grow the business there as well. It, it, it's easy to get emotional about. It's easy to grandstand over because uh, it's, it's a great product and we know that there's customers out there that love this pottery, that, that want to buy a domestically produced item made in the USA. And as long as there's customers out there like that, we'll still be here. If you love Our Ohio Television, then you'll enjoy being an Our Ohio supporter. For just $25, you can enjoy Our Ohio Magazine, support Ohio food and farms, and stay connected to what's happening in your community. Visit supportourohio.org.